thought I'd do a broadcast today on David Myatt and his numinous way, specifically his realizations that you too will experience in the near future. Now, David Myatt is mostly unknown to American audiences, primarily because they're morons, and I know everybody will be frantically <coughs> Googling David Myatt to discover who he is, and I'm referring here to the David Myatt, who is a former Islamist and alleged neo-Nazi, and now is 72 years of age, believe it or not, how time flies, was born in Tanzania, very high-level intellect, man of action, national frontist, and now proponent of the numinous way and rural philosopher. But I'm going to talk about his dilemma. And the reason, like I said, most people don't know about him is that most of the scenarios that play out today in the United States played out a long time ago in Europe. And therefore, one can learn from them. The Antifa of the 1980s in the United States that's kind of one of those weird transgender or transhuman creations that first emerged in England and to combat the National Front. And so Antifa, nothing new under the sun. Then we have PUA on the other side. And the whole trajectory of that course. And we saw this play out with Alan Sorrell in the 1990s, and Alan Sorrell is most, specifically, you could use him as a prototype for Andrew Tate today, but he precedes Royce and, or he, uh, he comes before, Royce is his predecessor, rather, and uh, most of the PUA community and so forth and so on, they all are his predecessors, and the fate of Alan Sorrell was, should have been a wake-up call, and certainly the fate, fate of Alexander Dugan's daughter is going to be a wake-up call, but I think the best part of this whole scenario is understanding that the man who is a great traditionalist was depending on his daughter as a, prop, as a propagandist, in the best sense of the word, rather than his son, so that was an unfortunate happenstance for him. Nonetheless, I'm talk about David Myatt because his realization is important. And his realization basically was that all politics lead to genocide. And once you have this realization, most people immediately seek to back away from politics. Now, if you read his autobiography, which is available freely on his website, and I believe it's available on Google. It's easy to obtain. It's easy to go to his website. Uh, he's clearly not considered to be a threat anymore by the powers that be because it's like third in the list. He is not a, in any way a threat, obviously, but one has to understand his realization because it comes to one at some stage of the game, and you have a choice of to, to back off and accept or death or persecution, or to just back off entirely and go somewhere else. But to see yourself as a political martyr, and all this in the context of the 20th century, is pretty ridiculous and annoying at this point in time, because there are no political martyrs anymore. That was based on the Western order, and it was certainly, you know, nobody felt bad for the Falangists who were shot down in the Spanish Civil War by the communists or when they assumed the republicans when they assumed power and they murdered a lot of the phalangists the liberal world order did not have a problem with that so specifically dealing with the future you are not going to gain any mileage from being a victim and you don't really and you have this gauntlet before you that really doesn't go anywhere so that leaves you with a very nihilistic view of the void, which I was telling Chairman Darrell the other day is only the beginning of gangster Bolshevism, but which we haven't talked about in a long time, and I may do some videos about gangster Bolshevism 
in the near future. But in this period of time, specifically, David Myatt was active on the street doing criminal acts and so forth. He ended up in prison several times. He's considered to be the godfather of British terrorism by some, which is, I think, not clearly the case. But the point is, Maya did not shy away from political violence in his youth. And he came to eschew political violence because he realized that all the political, political actions ultimately lead to genocide. And he feels like, I think, to not to put words in his mouth, but my feeling would be that his enemy is the same today, but he feels like his enemy will fall naturally because their aims or means will bring them down just as assuredly as his aims and means brought him down. Now, whether this is the case, whether this is correct or not, it's it's not it's up for discussion to be honest but the numinous way is definitely interesting and it's definitely more positive reading than anything you've done lately i know most of the listeners on this show or this broadcast can't actually read but you know there are and there are, there are a couple of interviews with david myatt that you can listen to online but again this this dilemma comes to everyone now because most people don't realize the gravity, let alone the implications of their actions. And they don't understand the long-term purpose of ideology, and they don't understand a lot that has to do with this. All of this ultimately must lead to bloodshed. And Somebody was talking about it the other day in terms of how Brooklyn was once, or the Bronx was once 90% white, and now it must be ethnic cleansing that has rendered it only 11% white. And it's certainly ethnic cleansing, but uh, from the perspective of the powers that be who have read The Rising Tide of Color, or are familiar with The Rising Tide of Color, or are familiar with the ideas that the rising tide of color puts forth, understand that the world being primarily non-white must be experienced in a different manner than it has previously. So instead of having outright barbarian invasions, what we're seeing is the soft assimilation of foreigners through the means of, you know, today's world. And, you know, they think this will work. I think there will be barbarian invasions anyway, and it will be masked under the migration, the total migration. So the barbarians will come in under the radar, so to speak, and they won't be recognized as such immediately. But the point of the matter is that, again, this political realization happens and it transforms the way people look at the world because most people aren't ready to engage in politics for any means. And so this is why I talked about when I started this channel, it was for to help people not emulate Eric Rudolph and Eric Frayn directly and to understand the nature of politics overall and what they're getting into when engaging in political acts because this is all more complex than your infantile mind can grasp for the most part and a lot of this has to come through with simple experience but this is not often obtainable so a lot of people go through their whole lives politically without ever experiencing or reaching the bottom line, so to speak. And that is, again, very similar. Simple, but it's coming. It's becoming more prevalent. We saw this the other night with Anthony Joshua. He gets down to the brass tacks with Usyk when he loses. He said, how could, I, you, how could you beat me? I'm stronger than you. That's brushing aside. That's getting down to the most elemental, primal level. The African, the simple African primal level. He doesn't obfuscate it with a lot of European 
niceties. He gets it down to the simple level. So more and more, the bottom line is going to come nearer and nearer to the surface. And you have to understand how you're going to react to it, be it like David Myatt or sensibly, perhaps, or there are other means of reacting to it as well. But that certainly is far from the worst one, perhaps.